So the film ends with a quote that really sums up the intention of this project. Um, and I think, I th can you hear me? I think what's what's remarkable is you're taking um, the, the retelling of these stories into theater, and then in film, you're really bringing their stories to a much larger audience. Um, I'm curious how you came to learn about this project and how you realized there was a film there. Uh, I realized there was a film there when... <laughs> well, I guess I realized there was a film there uh, when, uh, when Aaron uh, told his story about fishing. I, I kind of knew it before then, but that sort of convinced me that these, these are remarkable, there's some remarkable storytellers, and, and that story just, for me, you know, just, I, I mean, the thing, the thing one has to realize is this is three or four years out of these people's lives of 80, 90, years so it's a it's really a very small part of their lives of course blown up to perhaps the most significance but uh but that was that was interesting to me as well and how i came about it was uh we uh have a friend uh celia ores who's a survivor and uh we found out that she was doing this project it was already deep into it so it was too late to capture her but uh then my wife was like oh you should really make a film about this. And, uh, you know, that's, that's how I, I approached self-help. And, and they were like, we've been thinking about making a film. We really want to do that. And, um, and then I had to choose between these five schools where this program was, was going on. And, and Yeshiva was the first school that ever did it. Yeshiva graduate, Yeshiva High School graduate right here. And there's another one back there somewhere. Um, anyway, but um, and and I also filmed at the Heschel High School, but I have a short from that and couldn't make. I thought at one point of combining them, it was not doable. Um, I think I, I knew. Well, I mentioned that I went to Flatbush because I know the room in which you filmed, and and, it, and it's not you know it's it's a decent looking room, but it's not the most cinematic space and I think what you did so beautifully is you you made the film very cinematic through animation and those um, black background interviews uh, what was what was the process for you of figuring out how to turn a very incredible stories but a bland looking space into something that's really a dynamic film an impossible space to work in and the Heschel space was so pretty but you know that led to focusing on people's faces and being close up, and but really, then I was faced with that dilemma of how do you uh, sort of make this uh, something that has some visual quality to it, and um, uh, and then I, I, my first documentary, a film called Dream So Real, uh, focused on uh, mental patients and making their own animated films, and so I've been wanting to put animation in a film since that time a long, 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 long ago. Um, and, uh, and so that's what, you know, I felt like we have to take it out of this classroom and the archival footage a as well. And uh, I apologize for the little sink problem here, but it's not in the film if you noticed it. But uh, anyway, you're not supposed to say that. But, um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so that's how it, how it came to be. I think um, you mentioned at the end of the, f in the writing on the end of the film that, that um, what happened with Isaac and I think... Well, yes, yeah, since the time that uh, Isaac passed, um, Aaron and Claudine have also in the last year have passed away. Um, so, uh, yeah, that... Well, you know, the remarkable thing was these kids because they... Uh, it's been a couple of years, and I know people who did the program ten, uh, when it started, like now, eight, eight or nine years ago. Um, and they stayed in touch with these people, and they call them uh, every Friday before Shabbat. And, uh, and they're, they're just very devoted to them. And Max, who played Isaac, uh, would go visit him. And when he was sick, Max, every time I visited, Max was there. 
So it was quite remarkable. Have you spoken to the students at all about the impact this has had on their lives in the past few years or since this uh, film was, was done being shot? Uh, to some of them, you know, I think, um, yes. And, and, and I think, as I know from experiences like this, the full impact is 10 years down the road or 20 when there are literally no more survivors and then and then it's going to be a whole nother you know so so they're they were only 18 and i think it had a huge impact on them i think what was most significant for them is they got to know people many generations older than them and they bonded so strongly with them and in, in ways that they can't with their own grandparents necessarily in some cases yes but in many cases not and, and so I think that impact was in incredibly powerful then. And I think, you know, I I'd love to find out 10 years from now how they feel. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's a really interesting point because I think what you see in the film is not just that um, they're able to bond with these survivors in a way that they may not have not been able to with their grandparents, but I think the fact is that children of survivors and grandchildren of survivors might not want to ask them the questions that strangers feel comfortable asking them. And, and seeing these interactions is really beautiful. I'd love to open it to questions from the audience right here. So where else can people see this, and how can more people see this? How can more people see this? Where else will this be? Uh, well, it's, it's distributed by Menemsha Films, and it can be uh, rented from them. And we're talking about doing a very small theatrical release, and I know that uh, PBS in um, New York, WNET, will be will be screening uh, the film uh, sometime in the spring or summer. We're, we're not sure exactly when right now. So you know, so it's out there and accessible. And there's a website at witnesstheaterthefilm.com where you can learn learn more about it and and find out how your synagogue or whatever or church or you know mosque can show the film. And are you are you available? <laughs> Speak to my agent. Yes. <laughs> That's my sister back there. Ask her. Um, yeah. A question about the, the self-help group. Uh, you mentioned that they have been Where else is self-help doing this yeah, project? Yeah, self-help has been doing this since 2012. They started at Yeshiva in one school, and then it grew. Um, the year I did it, it was happening in, in five locations, mostly Jewish private schools. The Heschel uh, group was also with students from Trinity, uh, which is not a Jewish school, and they've done some public school uh, um, stuff in Westchester, um, but, you know, it's getting harder and harder, to be honest, and, and because it's hard to find survivors who can make that commitment at their age. And, uh, you know, so, so we'll see. I, know, I think this year was down to three schools, and I, I think they'll go for as long as, as they can go. And I just want to say, I think what struck me about this film is it's that model is something that other communities, not just Holocaust survivor communities, it could take on. It is an expensive process. It takes great commitment, but I think you know there's all all sorts of communities that would benefit from this kind of sharing, and hopefully it will be inspiring to others. You were saying the film is going to go into classrooms too. Um, can you talk a little bit about that? I think I'm going into a classroom tomorrow morning. Right? That, that you are, but <laughs> you were saying in in Germany. Uh, well, oh, in Germany, right, this has been translated into uh, German, uh, with German subtitles, I mean, and uh, the, the German consulate in, in New York was actually really involved uh, at the end and, and interested in bringing this to German classrooms, and, it's, and, and Germany, as some of you may know, has one of the most active uh, education programs about the Holocaust, more than... Uh, many other countries like France or England or, uh, you know, or Poland for sure and, you know, many other places. So, 
So uh, they have made great efforts and strides to educate the public, and uh, they're, they're doing their best, you know. What's your next project? That's the, that's the question I fear the most. Um, <laughs> I, am, I am working on something. It's, uh, I, I'm working on a few ideas. It's something that uh, is in early phase, but it's about um, a period in Puerto Rican history um, that involves filmmaking in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and interestingly, the person who started it, a man named Jack Delano, was a Jew who uh, grew up in Ukraine and came to this country and became a photographer as part of the film, the Farm Services Administration, and was sent to Puerto Rico in 1940 to to document poverty there. And anyway, that's just the very tip of the iceberg. Is it there? Were any were any of the um... Were any of the students or survivors reluctant to have you filming? Uh, no. <laughs> I think, I think uh, very quickly, uh, I mean, they, I became a part of the group in a way, and, uh, and, you know, so they did these circle things, and I'd be filming it, and they'd say, oh, and what do you have to say? <laughs> but... Um, uh, no, it was just me and a sound person, or sometimes just me. It depended on the circumstance, and um, uh, you know, I was there a lot, and I, I didn't, I just fo watched them do their thing, and uh, no, they were, you know, they they were a little shy, but no, they were they were very comfortable with it. Actually, you know, to be honest, the survivors, even though they were told. This is a film being made. We are making a film, and they signed, you know, releases. Like, when they saw the film, they were like, you were filming? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were taking photographs, you know? Um, so, uh, it was so, they're so sweet. And uh, I think they were kind of shocked, to be honest. I, I, I think it, it, it was a, I mean, some of them knew and took it in, and we're like, when is this going to be on TV? And, and others were just, just thought I was there taking photographs all the time. You know, so that was very sweet. And what was their response? Beyond being surprised that there was a film, what was their response uh, to it? I, you know, uh, I think they're, the res I don't think they're able to quite take it all in. I mean, uh, Isaac, I showed it to him in pieces because he was very sick, and I brought it to the... the rehabilitation center and then to his home and and uh, that to me you know I think was more moving for me and his and his wife Rosa uh, who's still doing well and his daughter um, you know I think to him it was you know he squeezed my hand and and that was very very moving and I, I know you know Aaron's family brought the film after he passed away to to their synagogue and, and to the Jewish Community Center where they are. And I think, you know, they're very proud of their remarkable parents. And I think, you know, any of you who, I'm not a child of survivors, but I know it's not necessarily an easy thing to be the child or grandchild of survivors. And I, I think also for them to have that remove for the next generation made it possible for them to appreciate their parents or grandparents in a completely new way. What's the proportion of how much you shot and how much went to the movie? So what's the proportion of how much you shot and how much went to the movie? And I'm also curious, how, were you there at every session? or? I was there at virtually every session. There were one or two I had to miss, and I had friends come uh, to, one friend in particular come to shoot two or three of them. Um, and... Um, uh, so there were like 25 weeks of these three-hour sessions, and then I did the interviews and whatever. So the math is, you know, 70 hours to 70 minutes. So whatever that ratio is, <laughs> my math is not so good. And I was filming at the Heschel School, but we won't count that. That was a whole other experience. There's somebody in the back yeah. there. Have they seen the film? 
the yes, the students, many of the students, not all the students have seen the film because they went off to college. So getting them together is virtually impossible to do. But many of them seen it and I, I, I simply think they, I mean, they said thank you, but they could not articulate, to be honest, how they felt. I think it was, it's, again, that's why I say it's for down the road. You know, and their experience is with the survivors more than with this film, which I think, you know, is, is a strange experience to see yourself up on the film there. Does self-help chart look for survivors who haven't shared their story before? Uh, no, that, that was purely accidental, and there was a lot of reticence on the part of uh, Agnes, for example, and, and Hana, who had not uh, shared, shared their experiences. As Aaron said, he told his children over and over and over again, and they couldn't hear it, of course. They can't, couldn't understand his, his experience until they, they saw the film. And, and, but... Uh, you know, and, and several of them were quite ambivalent about staying through the whole program. But I think for them, this was just, uh, you know, these kids are so sweet and, and so uh, embracing that I think it was just, they were very eager to be there week after week, as were the kids. It was a real highlight. And I, I don't think it's an exaggeration when when Aaron says he'll remember this for the rest of his life, which sadly is only a year or two longer, but I, I think they were hugely moved by the, by the uh, sharing that these, the, the, the fact that those kids were there for them uh, and listening and, and embracing them. I think it was an enormous thing for them. Yay, social workers, really. Yes, any other social workers in the crowd? Yes, really. Um, I, I just find uh, self-help is a, is a social work organization which supports survivors and now other communities in, in many different ways. And now they've, they're embracing Chinese community and others. But um, yeah, they, they I mean, uh, Sally is a social worker and there were several social workers there in the room at all times. Plus, their caregivers who were in the room, who you might have noticed in, in the background. And yay, caretakers, because those people are also remarkable and not getting paid very much to, to, to be there. Um, so, yeah, they were, ex, ex, and they chose the, they suggested people to Sally to be part of the, the experience. So that's how they, you know, the social workers knew their clientele and said, Oh, I think this person, I think Aaron can do it. And Sipora, uh, they, they've never had a couple before, but Sipora insisted on being there with her husband, and uh, he insisted that she be there with him. So, uh, as they say, couple goals, as some student <laughs> says. I didn't know what that meant, but uh, they're, they're quite a couple. They were. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for Tell your friends it will be available and to visit witnesstheater.com. Uh, witnesstheaterthefilm.com. And I hope to see you at other films over the next few days.